Are we good to go now, sir? Hello, sir. The delegates are joining. So, are we good to go now? Yeah, yeah. Good. Okay. So, good evening and welcome to one and all. I'm Ankita from Clarnet, the designated session assistant for a seamless experience. And Clarnet is India's most trusted and widely used digital platform with multiple enriching services exclusively for doctors. Clarnet is very proud to be a digital partner for this event organized by Society of Onco Anastasia and Perioperative Care. And topic of today's session is overview of cancer pain. So let's begin today's session for which I would like to invite Dr. Shahan Solanki to take over. So over to you, sir. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Ankita. And uh, I welcome you all to this 15th session of uh, this webinar series of SOPSI. And we are very fortunate to have two uh, doyens of this cancer pain management here with us who have very senior faculty. Uh, so I invite uh, Dr. P. N. Jain, who is the uh, ex uh, <coughs> this professor and head division of pain at Tata Memorial Hospital, Mumbai. And he's also the past president of the ICSP. And so, uh, <coughs> And, and sir have so many publications or books and everything, so many awards for pain and everything. So um, sir doesn't need any more uh, introduction to anybody, to all of us, we all know him. So um, <clears throat> sir, over to you, sir. Jain, sir. Good evening to everybody. Good evening, good evening. Thank you very much, Sohan. And welcome to uh, Professor Sushma Bhatnagar. She also doesn't need any introduction. Uh, she is one of the very senior most professor in AIMS on onco-anesthesia, as well as she is, uh, I think, director of uh, Rotary Cancer Center there. So, and she has been only Indian who has been in the governing council of IASP. So, she has, doesn't need much introduction. She has received a lot of excellence award in clinical research and practice in pain management. And uh, she has got 31 years of experience she has 336 publications and she must have, I think, delivered so many faculty lectures and more than 500 conferences. So I invite directly, without mud ado, I would invite Professor Sushma Vatnagar for this lecture on cancer pain. Thank you, madam. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jain. And uh, thank you, uh, Sohan. And uh, thank you, everyone, for, for inviting me to start to have this session i will start with my presentation just a minute give me a time okay okay so can you see the slides and uh you can hear me properly yes madam yes yes madam. okay okay thank you very much so uh thank you dr anjali once anjali called me uh by, uh, when I was in a very busy uh, meeting and uh, when I attended her meet, her call and she told me that uh, we want to uh, we want to request you to uh, take a lecture on cancer pain I think uh, uh, I immediately said yes and because uh, there is so many things which we can discuss on cancer pain and we can share our experience for cancer pain management and it is always beneficial whenever we discuss something on cancer pain management it always i have seen that whenever there is a lecture on cancer pain management i learn every time a new thing so uh, thank you dr anjali dr sohan and dr jyotsana for starting such a wonderful uh, lecture series and uh, today keeping this lecture on cancer pain management so uh, and thank you dr jain for introducing me uh, the learning objectives of this lecture will be only five that we want to learn what are what is best what is why we why they, this topic has been kept by SOPSI what what exactly the magnitude of problem we want to understand the approach towards assessment and importance of uh, management we want to understand pain relief as an important aspect while we are treating cancer pain patients so it's important aspect as a quality of life it really makes a huge difference when we manage properly. Uh, in terms of quality of life. We have to learn about WHO analgesic letter and what exactly the recent uh, evidence about WHO analgesic letter. And we want to learn the various drugs which are used and their effectiveness in cancer pain management. 
so this is a recent uh, uh, update prevalence of about the incidence uh, of cancer pain this was a systematic re systematic review and meta analysis and based on this almost uh, they have uh, included 4117 titles and 122 studies and what they have said that uh, cancer patients whether they are going undergoing curative treatment whether they are having any they are undergoing any uh, cancer treatment or whether they are in advanced stage every stage patient are in pain so almost 39 55 and 66 so this figure says that their patient cancer patients are in pain throughout the journey of the disease and it is necessary to treat pain because we know we as a pain physician and an anesthesiologist nobody can deny that it is necessary to treat pain because pain management is fundamental right and especially when patient is suffering with cancer pain so we can discuss a uh, whole of the lecture we will keep this uh, this case case scenario in, in mind whenever we are uh, we are discussing various aspects 33 year old lady with two uh, married two year old son husband earning member in family he left the job last one year because of the treatment she was developed she was she unfortunately developed carcinoma breast for surgery post radiation radiotherapy presented in pain clinic with severe pain all over the body so how will you approach this patient so i am not going to discuss all the time this case but definitely this case will remain in mind whatever concept i will tell and whatever concept i will tell will is will be based on my experience as well as based on the literature so first which we is very important to treat patient as a whole because whatever we say pain remains always a subjective phenomena and it has a true biopsychosocial uh, component in terms of pain whenever we want to treat so i will tell you based on the uh, gate control of uh, gate control theory of pain so this is a we have under we have learned it uh, so many times in our uh, in our undergraduate teaching curriculum as well as postgraduate teaching curriculum that whenever there is a pain uh, there is a gate which opens and amplifies retinate signal and brain feels perception of pain but this was a the old uh, this was a this was a theory which was we used to say that whenever there is tissue damage there is a there is a thing which gate uh, opens and patient feel pain and perceive pain but there is a component of experience emotions and behavior strongly i'll tell you how so this these are the various uh, factors which opens the gate and patient person feel more pain uh, for example, uh, when there is an injury, patient is going to feel pain and gate will open and uh, perceive perception will be more. But there are other factors also which opens and attenuate the pain. That is anxiety, stress, frustration, depression, and tension. Whenever patient is having so many factors response, because imagine this lady who has come young, who has got only young child uh, and uh, only her earning member husband who is not working since last one year, she must be having all other components. So how to handle these components, whether good communication will help, whether your medication will help, we will discuss it in detail subsequently. But simultaneously, if we will communicate, we will relax this patient by giving go good, honest information. She will, become she will become optimistic and she will have happiness and thinking. start thinking that yes, treatment will be there and I will be definitely better. And these doctors have uh, have promised me that I will remain pain free and I can live uh, my social life as best as possible. So this will close the gate. So imagine a pa serious patient who is having pain, and just after your communication and after your discussion with uh, with the, just giving her honest information about the disease and realistic treatment option, you you have relieved or her anxiety, her stress, her depression. And she started thinking positively that how to handle the treatment plan further. So this is the way these gates opens and closes. So it is very important to keep in your mind that whenever you start treating a patient, please talk to the patient. Please listen carefully what exactly bothering the patient more rather than just a physical pain or other emotional or psychosocial pain. So the most important which is uh, which will remain indispensable that is uh, indispensable that is knowing your patient understanding the patient about right from the beginning of the disease till the patient has come to you it is very important 
so for understanding it is important to have a summary evaluation so this is very important and i think this is just a basic so we all must be knowing this that we should have an idea that how severe the pain is where it this pain is what is the character uh, with what are the factors which are radiating uh, re which are which are responsible for radiating or referred pain and what are the aggravating and relieving factor and how much impact of the pain in the quality of life so these are the basic this again a basic thing which we all should know when we discuss because if we will not understand that what type of pain is we won't be able to treat properly so assessment remains the key for successful management so there are two types nociceptive and neuropathic we all know nociceptive is somatic and visceral somatic pain is like with skin arise from skin soft tissue and bone and visceral pain from the viscera and similarly quality of pain these are the various terms which people use when patient is having pain he will use aching super uh, superficial derp sharp and if patient is having pain for example capsular stretching pain or beta stretches to liver pain they will say that is stabbing burning and gripping similarly when there is a neuropathic pain they will say tightening they will say shooting burning and uh, electric current like sensation so all these terms i think we understand very well but this we should be utilizing and we should use these uh, understanding in terms of management because without understanding without assessing properly you we will not be able to manage pain properly now how will you proceed for the pain management for this lady imagine so whenever we try to manage a patient with pain we should have four goals in our mind that i am going to provide analgesia i am going to give as active life as possible to my patients i will try that whatever medication i am giving i should the medication should not ca cause intolerable side effects and worsen quality of life i should be very very careful when we i am giving medication that she should not start taking or by by illicit manner uh, or she should not become tolerant and she should not become a, a, a habitual of these medication and finally i will assess the effect of pain so this is uh, this is very important to understand that we, uh, our goals should be based on these things that analgesia is one goal but activity is taking care of adverse effect very concerned about the aberrant drug taking behavior this is also very important so uh, we, cancer pen, whenever we try, try to treat any patient and this lady if we will try to treat we will use analgesics we will use primary anti neoplastic treatment for any for various kinds of pain which will come we will discuss later we will use interventional analgesic therapy and we will definitely give lot of importance on psychological and rehabilitative interventions so this was a simple medication and simple sol solution but always remain underutilized and remain a riddle for since years together this this uh, regime or this protocol was given by who in 1986 based on this protocol uh, we, we we divide pain and medication into three parts step 1 step 2 and step 3 when pain is mild to moderate we use no non opioids analgesics with adjuvants when moderate we use mild opioids and analgesics with adjuvants and with pain is severe we use strong opioids non opioids and adjuvants and the principle always remains that it should be used by the mouth preferably because this is the true route which is easy for patient it should be given all the time by the clock because pain is always going to be there because the when tumor is there when disease burden is there it's not going to go away so we have to give medication round the clock we just cannot avoid round the clock medication it has to be for the individual it is very important that uh, it is always not a single patient i in my last 24 hours i can say there are not a single patient i have seen that both the, the two patients were similar so every patient is different dif, uh, di, different and we have to tailor the pain or pain relief measures according to the patient and finally we cannot forget attention to the details what exactly my patient is saying what which component is bothering her a lot so uh, this was the because there are uh, i i when i started seeing the literature uh, that what exactly the situation or what ex exactly the, the status of who letter in cancer pain management there were so many papers so i just thought that i use one, only one paper it, that was published in january 2023 and this paper clearly says the efficacy uh, efficiency of strategy is debatable although uh, throughout the large scale studies throughout the uh, till the now in the literature 
Never, nonetheless, it, it is still provides a simple palliative approach to reducing morbidity due to pain in 70 to 80 percent of patients. So remember that we keep saying that WHO letter doesn't work, it is useless in cancer pain management or something like this. But still, in the recent literature, recent paper clearly says that in even in 70 to 80 percent of patients, it reduces morbidity and it relieves pain in cancer patients. Now, this is a very important paper which uh, uh, definitely will uh, again an eye opener that we keep saying that we have to use opioids for adult for cancer. So this was an ESCO guidelines and uh, in the published in 2023 and uh, clearly says ESCO guidelines that opioids should be offered to the patient to moderate to severe pain. Opioids should be initiated in lowest possible dose for patient with substance abuse abuse disorder. They should also not be deprived of pain management. We should have a definite plan. Unfortunately, a patient with substance abuse disorder uh, is having pain. We should have a proper plan for this patient also. also. An opioid adverse effect should be monitored and should be treated, or preferably it should be prevented, but it should be managed properly. So both these uh, both these uh, papers of 2023 clearly says that we should be we should be having a lot of faith on opioids. Only thing we should be having good opioid uh, uh, opioid management plan in our mind. This is a paper which was published by TMH again uh, uh, by Raghu and uh, all other uh, uh, by Indian Society of Study of Pain, and clearly says that. Uh, uh, opioid is the first choice for moderate to severe pain. So our I mean, our paper, as well as recent 2023 papers, everybody gives a lot of emphasis to give uh, opioids for cancer pain management. Now it is it is important to learn that this paper, which is a very very important paper, that because this paper this we have also conducted this study although we uh, we are late in publishing that study that how, what is the uh, what is the role of low dose opioids versus second step that is tramadol and codeine so uh, we I, I when I, we were practicing we were we were seeing this that when moderate to severe pain uh, if patient is coming with can, in cancer patient in a pain clinic if with moderate to severe pain uh, weak opioids doesn't work a lot. So with this, uh, these two papers, I'll come to the next paper, which first paper published in 2016 in Journal of Clinical Oncology. What this paper says that a patient who is having moderate to severe pain, if you will go step by ladder type, ladder wise, then the change will be too frequently. So if patient is having severe pain or moderate to severe pain, it is best to directly switch to low dose of opioids rather than starting tramadol and uh, tependadol and codeine of the step two letters and this is our practice also that patient most of the time they come with either with very very mild pain because it's a practice in AIMS and IRCS now that if patient is having even mild pain they send the patient to the pain clinic we give paracetamol and adjoint but if patient is coming with moderate to severe pain hardly any of our patient they are on Dependadol and tramadol, we straight away start low dose of morphine. And this paper clearly says that if we will start low dose of morphine in moderate to severe pain, the symptom burden of this patient will be better and patient's overall quality of life will be better. This is an another paper on 2022, which is a it was a randomized controlled trial. And what this trial says that median change of uh, there were two groups, one is using two-step approach and another one using three-step approach. And what they have said, that median time to change was on, only six days in control arm where, where we used three-step three, three step ladder in comparison with ex, experimental arm. And there was less, uh, less nausea and le cost were less because when we compare the cost of tramadol, tependadol versus morphine and uh, opioids, uh, low-dose uh, low morphine, I think cause it is in it is there is no comparison of cost. If a patient is on tramadol, for example, highest doses of hundred milligram TDS, that is taking three hundred milligram, not getting adequate relief, you are spending a lot of money. Similarly, tependadol, you are spending a lot of money, but patient is not getting relief, having a lot of nausea and vomiting. While versus a patient who is on low dose of opioids, that is the much different. Patient will get better relief and will have 
less uh, um, better quality of life but whenever we are using any medication ground rule remains these these are the ground rules that first we should have a clear cut idea that why the pain is so we should have a we should know how to correct the correctable cause i have already given emphasis that we should definitely take care of anxiety treatment finance and family other other important aspect we should always give a lot of importance patient is having anger bureaucracy or whatever depression and all this with psychosocial component should be taken care very well by good communication by explaining about the disease and by real, by explaining about the status what exactly the patient is suffering i think what i i can say that uh, in one of our, oh i forgot that uh, that uh, study to one of our phd student did he she did a total pain uh, study on total pain and what we have seen in that study she was a PhD, she, she is working in icmr right now that only 35.5% component was physical pain and rest everything was on was psychosocial component so it is important and how to take care of psychosocial component by again good good communication the only two things the patient wants to understand based on that study that what is happening to me what is the cause of pain because everybody wants to know cause of pain and how much realistic treatment possible for the disease and for the pain so once you will give these three or four important information to the patient you have taken care of the whole of the psychosocial component similarly it is important to give lot of emphasis on age because if 70 80 years of frail patient will come your opioid management plan should be very 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 uh, very very different as a uh, comparatively up to a young patient organ function looking after liver function and kidney function is most important because all opioids like morphine op metabolize through liver and passes through kidney so if uh, uh, patient is uh, the main opioids morphine three glucuronides and six glucuronides one is responsible for pain management and one is responsible for side effect and if electric efts are delays the uh, the metabolites will be more in the body and patient will have lot of side effects so it is important to look after the liver function and kidney function test and similarly we should definitely be looking after that a patient who is already on uh, uh, substance abuse disorder means patient is already alcoholic or having cannabinoid uh, habits or something then definitely i am not saying to deprive these patient also but we should be using lot of uh, there should be a plan and what plan we, we will uh, we will use you yourself will be there the family members who is the direct one and the nearest one patient and sometime if possible a counselor or drug de addiction uh, doctor if drug de addiction doctor is not available with you the definitely a counselor we all four will make a good team for a patient who is having substance abuse disorder and we will make sure that patient will remain uh, pain free all the time but he should not be misusing or overusing these drugs and it is important that whenever you are treating a cancer patient the drugs which you have started it should be available all the time we have seen the patient they take morphine from our hospital they when they go to far away places 500 600 km if it is not available then patient are patients are in pain and they they they, they think what to do with when they are in severe pain and one of uh, one of the incidents which i cannot forget any time in my life that one of a iit boy who was 25 years old was suffering with cs stomach uh, with multiple uh, with uh, with, dist with uh, distant metastasis we did everything for him and up uh, once we have realized that we won't be able to do much for the disease he wanted to go back to one one of a big city uh, this this story is almost 15 years back in uttar pradesh he went there his father used to come and procure medication every month and once sometime once what happened that he could not come to delhi and uh, his the childhood friends started procuring cannabinoids for this boy so he used to take cannabinoids he used to get part, partially relief because there was no uh, drug uh, drug uh, this thing uh, doses uh, adjust, adjustment with what he was taking as a morphine and they were just uh, 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 whatever what whatever amount is available they used to give this boy and one day what happened that they could not procure cannabinoids also from uh, illicit sources and finally one day in the mid of the middle of the night he was in severe pain and he committed suicide so this this story always gives me goosebumps whenever i take lectures 
this is a real story so if you are treating any cancer pain patients it is important that medication should be available till the patient is having end so at till end of life it should be available so that the patients are not addicted to this but they are genuinely requiring medication for the disease not for their habit or for so don't be afraid don't keep your myths and misconception keep your myths and misconception away from this world because if a patient is having genuine disease and is requiring medication he is requiring medication for pain management not for anything else so it is important to make it available all the time so but it is not available and there are so many myths that i told you about myths and misconceptions so we did a study on this uh, 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 this uh, uh, what are the barriers in prescribing opioids and see uh, these are the important barriers which we have found lack of information about policies regarding opioid analgesic dangerous adverse effect profile means people we think that only opioid causes dangerous side effects none other drugs on allopathy causes side effects but which is absolutely wrong addiction addiction potential for opioid analgesics is too high and we think that if patient is we are starting uh, opioids and we always think that if patient is coming back means he is addict which is wrong administrative burden on record keeping because when we keep opioids it is important to when we uh, uh, procure we keep a record so record keeping is very important so and while dispensing record keeping is important so we don't want to do so much of uh, work and possible scrutiny by regulation bodies and law enforcement still when we ndps act has amendment in 2014 but is still we have lots and lots of misconception so based on the a basis of ndps amendment in 2014 is balanced and pragmatic approach what is the balanced and pragmatic approach if a patient is requiring opioids it is your responsibility to provide him and ensure him that adequate availability of opioids for cancer pain management but it is also your responsibility to keep proper record keeping and keep for pro proper follow up so it should not be diverted and it should not be misused for in a illicit channel channel so and a doctor who is working in a hospital and treating cancer pain patient they are they will never if they are keeping the record properly they will not be liable for any uh, punishment or something so it it was it was i i am not going into the details of ndps act am, amendment uh, 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 and what i suggest that uh, we should keep a one important this is very very important to learn that what exactly the ndps act and we should keep one lecture in this forum also that what is the recent law of opioid procurement and what is the recent law says and so everybody should be having a clear cut idea what is the procedure of opioid procurement uh, keeping a record and opioid dispensing so this we will uh, take uh, in a separate this is just my suggestion that we should keep one very important this is important aspect and i have taken one lecture on uh, world hospice and palliative care day or two only on anesthesiologist on this ndps act uh, amendment Uh, amendment in 2014 which was the recent which is the most recent amendment and everybody appreciated because we use morphine fentanyl so much but we don't know how it is coming what is the rules and regulation we still believe that if a cancer we are giving medication and if there will be any lapse in record keeping we will be uh, liable for punishment this is not so in these days so we should keep this lecture on this so uh, this is again a, our publication where we have Uh, I I I am very aware of time, uh, so I will keep, uh, talk ten more minutes and then we will stop. Uh, this is Morphe safety module, which we have uh, we have kept uh, as a ten important steps to safely opioid prescription practice. That we should have a the development of trust between doctor and patient. We should create awareness about the uh, medication that these are used for cancer pain management, and it should be not maybe. we should empower physician by such classes for example today we are uh, such a big empowerment uh, everyone must be listening they, they, they now realize that who letter works opioids are mainstay of cancer pain management so similarly it is important to empower pain phys uh, uh, physician assigning the responsibilities whenever you are giving medication you should assign the responsibilities that who will be responsible to keep the uh, keep the medication carefully at home a uh, wife husband or son or whosoever and it should not be used by others for pain management in family or nearby 
it should be available all the times so i have given one example i i am again giving lot of emphasis on this that if you start cancer pain management services please make sure that it should be available and with the nd learning of ndps act amendment you will realize that it is a very very simple process we have to educate society because there are societal myths and misconception also if we don't be able to patient will not be able to use medication how they will give how they will bring back and if if at all it gets expired how to how to dispense how to uh, uh, how to destroy it everything all these practice should be carefully known but safe dispensing at your pharmacy level is also very important that so we have started uh, courses for pharmacists for uh, from all over india in iapg so that all the pharmacies those are handling opioids in various hospitals now this course has become very very popular course that we want to teach all the pharmacists self handling of opioids in their hospital it should be supervised all the time if something happens and if you are not supervising i think this is your fault total pain relief is important as i have given enough emphasis on this and definitely step 10 that if a patient can be if we can use at intervention definitely a simple single rib metastasis uh, if this lady that's carcinoma breast patient if she will come with single rib metastasis i will prefer intercostal block with intercostal rfa so that i can avoid unnecessary medication to, to this lady so this is very important to learn all these 10 steps to uh, for safe dispensing practice of pain management these are just medication i think i will not go into details we know all these medication uh, but we should be having an idea that there are two preparations available in this country for morphine immediate release which work for 4 hours and round the clock if you want to give you have to give six times a day uh based on the weight and the lft kft you can reduce to six six uh, three times a day or four times a day uh and once patient pain is stabilized we can convert to to improve the compliance because four hourly medication is very difficult to take for the patient we can convert to sustained release that is control is tablet which works for 12 hours 10 and 60 mg preparations is available so for example if this lady will get stabilized on 60 mg what i will do in next visit i will change it to 30 mg bd so that she will have to take only twice a day so this is a regime which works very well uh, for the patient how to start i have already told round the clock medication then if you want to change uh, i have seen so many patient in my clinic they come with severe pain and they say that there is a patch in on my hand there is a patch on my thigh but they are on pain so i really don't know how they have titrated the fentanyl sometime it is 15 microgram sometime it is 25 microgram sometime it is 75 microgram so it is important that if patient is coming with moderate to severe pain you have to titrate the dose of fentanyl and for the titration of dose of fentanyl there are only two options available either you can admit the patient and see what what are the right right doses which relieve the pain and titrate with fentanyl otherwise you have to titrate with morphine and whatever dose which is coming uh, for the morphine for example if this lady will be relieved with 60 mg of morphine the carcinoma breast lady what i will do i will convert it to fentanyl because she says that i am very very having severe side effects and i really don't want constipation i really don't like and i have heard that fentanyl patch works equally well so what i will do i will convert this 60 mg to fentanyl patch and whatever dose morphine uh, we get divided by 3 will be the approximately this is an approximate divided by 3 will be the fentanyl dose dose so this lady will require 25 mg that uh, that will come 20 so 25 mg patch we will give so always remember that even if you are using fentanyl please titrate carefully that how much dose patient requiring so those patient those who are coming in severe pain in our clinic with fentanyl patch from private hospital this means they don't know how to titrate the dose of fentanyl and they are just uh, 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 whatever means like they are just giving fentanyl patch without understanding that how much dose my patient is requiring so there is a way to start fentanyl buprenorphine also is is a very commonly used drugs but most of the time even the whole the whole world literature says that it is not the drug of choice for cancer pain management because of various side effects it causes lot of side effects and i don't use buprenorphine in our centers we don't use buprenorphine for cancer pain management but again it's a very good analgesic available with 5 10 20 microgram patch works for 7 days we get lot of patients with buprenorphine patch also 
we remove patch and we titrate the dose with morphine and we give them morphine or fentanyl accordingly. Then it is important to learn uh, op giving opiates, but it is always very, very important that analgesia is important, but the balancing side effects is also important. So whatever, if you are giving medication, for example, if you are giving morphine, definitely be careful that patient is going to have uh, constipation all the time because body will never develop uh, tolerance for constipation and you have to prescribe laxative and laxative also is should be uh, because uh, morphine causes constipation because it uh, reduces peristalsis and uh, 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 it, it, it dehydrated uh, because it hardens the stool. So uh, we need uh, any uh, uh, laxative which soften the stool and increases the peristalsis. So we have to be very, very careful by giving uh, in giving medication. Uh, in uh, isabgol will not work, lactulose will not work, but the the visacodil and cremethin plus, which is very commonly used in all over country, is the only two medication right now works for morphine induced constipation. Similarly, morphine induced, we should explain to the patient about that if you are taking med morphine. There may be chances that you may feel side effects, side effects like nausea. So we give medication, uh, anticipatory medication, but they will not, they will not require all the time because body will develop tolerance, and in well, within a week they will not feel nauseating also. So it is important to uh, when you are giving analgesia to important. I will not go into the details of side effects. I think there are so many. Uh, this thing uh, we have a lot of uh, misconception that morphine will cause respiratory depression, but uh, uh, there uh, morphine has a pain has a strong antagonistic effect on the depressant effect of morphine. If pain is severe and you are giving right doses, patient will not have side effect. If he is sleeping well because he is pain relief, we should not consider that he is having a respiratory depression. But definitely, respiratory depression can occur if he will not be looking. If suddenly uh, you LFT KFT will get deranged, then definitely respiratory depression can occur because then metabolites which, which causes side effects are more in the body and the blood. So we it should be very very important to take care of side effects in a very and so and supervise your patient carefully. Even if LFT KFT get deranged, it's you should not be uh, immediately switching off the morphine. Rather, when we should reduce the medication. Is, and we should increase the uh, increase the uh, uh, dosing spacing spacing of the dosing is very is important. This is also very important aspect breakthrough pain which happens in cancer patients a lot and it troubles a lot. This pain is relieved most of the time, but as soon as they walk, they uh, they get up from the bed. Pain. This lady can have a very strong breakthrough pain the component if she will be having a bony metastasis in the spine or in the rib. As soon as she's lying down, everything is fine with 10 milligram 4 hourly morphine with other adjuvant drugs. But as soon as this, she start working and she start doing any household work, she is having pain. This is called breakthrough pain. But uh, it is important to relieve breakthrough pain also. There are mainly basically two types, incident pain or end of dose pain. Incident pain means whenever patient is doing any physical activity, pain is there. End of dose pain means she's taking 10 milligram of morphine. She is relieved for three hours, but last one hour is she is not relieved. This means she is not having dosing is not adequate. We have to increase so we give extra medication at that hours and whatever extra medication patient is taking divide by three, divide by six will be the right dose. So end of dose pain and incident pain is very very common. It is important they, we have seen incidental pain, but may intervention really works a lot. And this is a paper where uh, we have uh, given uh, clear cut evidence that. Radio frequency ablation of intercostal nerve works in, for incidental pain due to rib metastasis really improves quality of life and decreases analgesia, which we published uh, America in American Journal of Hospice and Palliative Care. So uh, now next comes the uh, we have thirteen more uh, I think thirteen more, ten more minutes. So uh, how to use intervention? It is important that we should have uh, because this is again a very important uh, question which remains in especially in palliative care physicians mind where to use or intervention when not to use intervention so decisive criteria should be failure to achieve adequate analgesia with pharmacological treatment and whenever pain is localized and governed by a single nerve dermatome or nerves i think we can use uh, we can use uh, intervention this was again a paper which we published in, in pain practice so, uh, 
this is again a paper which we published that individualized interventional pain management technique in early cancer patient is a desirable protocol. Uh, uh, in neuropathic pain, again, uh, it is an important entity in cancer patients, and it is always very severe and excruciating. And uh, IASP uh, and various other guidelines have given clear cut evidence, and this is the ladder. Most of the time, gabapentin, pregabalin, and duloxetine works really better. TCA is was there in uh, uh, in all these guidelines, but recently I forgot that article also to bring the TCA. It's a it's a big review article. The tight tricyclic antidepressant has no significant improvement. There is no significant improvement, and we should not be using tricyclic antidepressant for neuropathic pain. So this is again a very important understanding and important knowledge which was uh, which has uh, um, uh, they have uh, contributed to the literature. The TCA uh, this there is a paper uh, that TCA work, doesn't work, so we should be using most of the time gabapentin, pregabalin, or duloxetine for uh, for cancer pain patients. And this is step one. Then step two: capsaicin, lidocaine, or tramadol, uh, or strong opioids. And uh, 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 then th this step three: this is a uh, uh, botulinum toxicity, etc. So this was a, a paper. Uh, so this was a paper which we published in post thoracotomy scar pain. And this lady, she used to have severe pain. She is disease free. She is still disease free. This is a uh, almost uh, fifteen years back. We we have given now peripheral nerve field stimulator stimulation. We have done for this lady. She she is disease free. She has got second malignancy in, uh, uh, recently. Uh, carcinoma uterus. In, initially, she was uh, carcinoma uh, lung, and she used to come without clothes because the, the because of thoracotomy scar pain. We have given a lot of medication, but most of the time, either she used to cry uh, because of pain, or she used to sleep because of over medication. So we did peripheral nerve field stimulation for this lady, and she remained pain free almost for 10, 15 years. And now we have removed this peripheral nerve field. Stimulator also. This was a, a patient uh, who is nerve sheet tumor of uh, cervix. This reason removed. She was he was disease free, but he was pro by profession he was a driver, and he whenever he used to wear belt, he, he used to get severe pain, neuropathic pain on the scar site. Again, we did uh, uh, this peripheral nerve field stimulation for this boy, this man, and he remained disease free. I don't know about whether he's alive or not, but uh, since last uh, five years, I have lost confidence touch for this patient. But we, I know about the above lady; she is still alive. Uh, now this comes the role of I will take three four slides on scramble therapy. Scramble scrambler therapy, which works on the principle of tense. First paper we published was uh, as a uh, a novel treatment approach for chronic post-operative pain. This was again for non-malignant post-operative pain because this was a scar pain. And what we have found that scrambler therapy, which works on the principle of tense, really works better in these two cases. This was case reports. Then we published this uh, uh, um, this paper, and we clearly said uh, based on this uh, uh, based on our experience, this was a, 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 a experience of four patients that it really works well. Uh, in uh, patients and it provides adequate pain relief and reduces pain medication. Then this uh, we published uh, experience of 20 uh, patients and we, what we have seen that it really works well. It improves quality of life and disease requirement. Then one of my PhD students took as a thesis and she did randomized control trial and which was published in Pain Physician. And what we have said, what in this trial, we have clearly said that Komal was our student. It's clear that scrambler therapy is an effective treatment for pain management due to head and neck cancer and thoracic cancer patient. And then she published a very good uh, paper uh, on similar, on the same data on quality of life. And this was published in India Journal of Palliative Care. And she said, she clearly said that when she treated this patient, the series of patients, the quality of life was better because, because of less medication and less side effect. And then she published one systematic review, uh, again, uh, again in uh, pain practice. And uh, what uh, they have uh, in systematic review, we have said that it is an, a good, good option for cancer patient suffering from pain. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm not saying that scrambler therapy should be available, but non-pharmacological therapy in terms of uh, TENS, uh, it really works better in neuropathic pain, especially post-surgical pain, post-scar pain. So rather than overloading by medication, I think we should start thinking of, of this. Then these uh, on abdominal, early abdominal malignancy papers, there are 
we have published multiple papers on uh, like uh, early uh, neurolysis for pain management or gastrointestinal malignancy and again we published and we clearly said that early int integration of interventional pain management scheme it decreases analgesia improves quality of life this was a paper on anterior hyper uh, superior anterior hypo, uh, ultrasound hypogastric fluxus block again paper says that it improves quality of life it reduces medication now this is bone pain bone pain is also a very important entity when we learn about cancer patients and cancer whenever so there are evidence on bone pain also uh, evidence clearly says tenosumab is uh, you can say uncompleted bone pain and complicated bone pain and skeletal this is the way i have divided and what we say, uh, clearly say that there is hardly any role of anti epileptic uh, bisphosphonate uh, definitely it will not reduce pain but it can reduce skeletal related events but role definite role is there of radiotherapy plus uh, definite role uh, of uh, for example strontium, strontium and nuclear medicine therapy so it also improves pain relief and improves quality of life when patient is having clear cut uh, vertebral collapse then vertebroplasty and kyphoplasty really works well if so if single vertebral collapse is there rather than overloading with medication if possible and if uh, your uh, infrastructure allows please we do these procedures so this is again now it it was about chronic pain now i'll talk about the acute pain services in two slides this is just an example of 2021 and 2022 we have treated 3000 or almost 5000 patients and i'm just giving you an example of use of opioids in these patients almost everywhere we have we have used um, uh, mixed epidural regional block pca iv analgesics everything but patient discharge an opioid out of more than 3000 patient only eight patient discharge an opioids in 2022 and out of 5000 we discharge an opioid only 23 patient so and we whenever we discharge patient on opioids in at irch and nci we follow our patient till the discharge all our post operation so whenever patient is discharged on opioids we follow these patients so because we don't want that unnecessary who is disease free should not be hooked on these medication so uh, we have followed up rest uh, all these patients and uh, uh, we most of the patient they reduce uh, we stop opioids but most of the time if there is an extensive surgery and non operability we have to continue this medication non pharmacological therapy i have given enough importance but this is a very wonderful paper we should definitely use uh, definitely read which gives a lot of importance to uh, yoga uh, uh, acupuncture uh, uh, tens massage uh, other hypnosis and music therapy music therapy we all know we all we uh, we we are using music therapy as a uh, extensive measures in all our patient so this was an integrated pain management approach which we published in indian journal of medical medical science where we have seen that multidisciplinary good psychotherapy really works well so last two three slides that cancer pain has a huge biopsychosocial component patient is going to be depressed patient remain really anxious so it is you who can make a difference your effective counseling your time will be most important for the patient your time and your patience will work better than medication so it is important to use effective counseling which is indispensable part of pain cancer pain management and it will really work wonder in patient's life patient is not asking too much of from you just asking that few five minutes face eye to eye contact explain them why the pain is why the patient why what what is the realistic hope possible with the treatment whether i will be cured and what is realistic hope from the treatment for pain and not a single patient is asking to see that you give false hope that i am giving you this block and you will be completely pain free this is absolutely wrong i am giving you this medication you are come you will be completely pain free right in neuropathic pain if you are saying this you are saying wrong so give realistic hope that i am trying to give you pain management pain free, making you pain free your uh, your positivity your understanding of pain will also help so we will work as a team and we will try to give realistic pain uh, management possible and it will improve quality of life so take home message pain management is an essential part of oncological management survival is directly linked with pain management which contributes a huge in patient's life we need to understand patient as a whole understanding knowing our patient is very very important cancer pain can be successfully can be managed in majority of the patient so for 
opioid remains the most effective treatment plan and you should everybody should learn how to use opioids safely how to store how to dispense and how to give medication and give instruction to the patient thank you very much and i am very happy that uh, you have given me this opportunity thank you very much so thank you very much dr sushma bhatnagar for this very exhaustive and excellent lecture on cancer pain and uh, you have uh, detailed all the issues we have nicely de detailed about morphine use about counseling about communication about non pharmacological uses about interventions and so i can see there are two questions in the chat box so one is about uh, whether by uh, whether uh, our narcotic license is uh, sufficient for using methadone And yes so state? so so there are six opioids uh, included in this uh, ndps act so methadone is one morphine fentanyl methadone oxycodone uh, uh codeine uh, and recently they have included the tramadol also so uh, the, this license is sufficient for methadone also and methadone i have not gone into the detail of methadone i have not uh, take this took the slide but methadone is also a very very important uh, analgesic which can be used for cancer pain management only thing we need we should have a good practice because there is a specific protocol to be followed while using methadone she is also asking what is the status of use of methadone in india the status of use of methadone in india ah still so i still remember that uh, in uh, in a meeting with drug controller general of india when we were methadone was available for drug addiction program i was uh, i requested them that the, it should be used for cancer pain management as well in india so i went to in that meeting and with a huge difficulty it was uh, finally it was uh, luckily there were at least three four members they were on my side that it should be available because it is the cheapest medication for cancer pain management so uh, almost 10 years back it was it was ultimately approved that can be used for cancer pain management and rusan started manufacturing methadone but unfortunately most of the places it is not being used still very few places it is used so i will say that it is uh, definitely we are not using it uh, for cancer pain patients nicely it should be used because it is the cheapest medication and sometimes when severe neuropathic pain patients and severe cancer pain patient where there is a component of hyperalgesia where morphine and fentanyl is not working methadone really works well then she is asking about the uh, buprenorphine you said that in your center you don't use buprenorphine no, everywhere it should not be used for cancer pain management at least post operative pain continue using for i don't know about non non malignant pain i don't want to commit but definitely in non malignant pain also whenever we are using such medication we should be very very careful that how long and how much this is very important buprenorphine is not the drug of choice for cancer pain management and then one more question what is the current scenario of cannabinoid in india cannabinoid again cannabinoid again <clears throat> is a, is a experimental there are lot of companies came and finally they wanted to do this this trial in india also but i, I we didn't get the permission from dcgi cannabinoids again it's a good medication pain medication uh, future maybe it it will be used uh, because i as i gave the example that when my that diet boy will not get it was not getting more pain the, the his, uh, uh, yeah, classmates of uh, young uh, schoolmates they brought cannabinoids and he used to get some relief so cannabinoids is a good medication uh, again used judiciously the uh, the evidence says that it can be used uh, for cancer pain management effectively uh, provided we use it judiciously certainly we, we are using one actually we are doing one randomized clinical trial on cannabis in tata hospital in cancer pain and uh, previous articles are showing just the role in refractory neuropathic pain it is not for so much for so much of somatic pain but certainly it can be used in refractory neuropathic pain that is the there are some evidence on that but we are doing now randomized clinical trial and we will come out with the truth Very so uh, so my friend the fourth question is that what is the current scenario and uh, yeah so i don't think
should we avoid uh, morphine in breast carcinoma somebody is asking oh so yes 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 this is again a very important very nice question so in acute pain, acute uh, perioperative pain uh, for perioperative pain i think again there are a lot of studies by done by uh, bernhard from uh, australia he is doing in this area and he he has says he says that uh, i think uh, in case in perioperative period if we can avoid opioids uh, but you know we should be very very uh, judicious that we should patient while avoiding opioids patient should not remain in pain so for long term again evidence not clear cut but there are incidents that say that if you are using opioid in perioperative period there are chances of recurrence uh, in long term again uh, not very convincing evidence so i think if there are no questions any other question from the audience we have six more minutes we can you can ask as many as you want any questions from the audience now there are a lot of uh, interest has come in opioid sparing anesthesia opioid free anesthesia right we are we are using not using opioids due to this uh, issue of uh, natural killer cells are suppressed by the morphine and opioids like that so that is why in perioperative period opioid strong opioids are not used and uh, breast is a, not a surgery where morphine is used often in perioperative period by the actually just uh, paracetamol and the nsaids only in the perioperative period for one two days the pain goes away so there is not a big problem in breast of course when the metastatic setting is there when the chronic pain breast is there certainly you will require uh, morphine and there is no harm in using morphine so any other question if there are no question so then yeah. i want to ask question sohan and, and dr anjali that why have you kept this uh, topic in this sopsi uh, this thing sohan <laughs> what was there in your mind so madam actually that because the in sopsi we, we deal with the onco anesthesia pain and palliative care everything so and uh, pain is an imminent part of the cancer anesthesia right right and without pain management we cannot achieve anything uh, even if we do surgery with we have a lot of pain and then uh, that is that, that increases the pain management pain is going to yeah, be increase, there increase. for every onco anesthetist yeah. we cannot like uh, tell you okay yeah, he is only anesthetist and he will not manage pain so onco anesthetist has to manage pain that's why the these type of talks are required uh, and, and especially from the like doings like you and dancer so we are, we are really fortunate to have uh, you both on board today so uh, I, i think this is absolutely right so that everybody should know uh, about medications about using them safely there should be not be any myths and misconception about lot of medication which we are having myths and misconception we should not keep all sorts of myths and misconception another so question, Arugia, another, is, another question is what may be the duration of rfa in cancer pain as it is recurrent so arogya this works for 3 to 4 uh, months actually so rfa if you are doing for example if this lady which i have given the example if we do rfa for single rib metastasis uh, it works for 2 to 3 months and then we have to repeat it good Uh, madam can i just add to what sohan said he answered very comprehensively the query you posed but i also <laughs> wanted to say that um, i'm very glad that uh, you addressed this issue because the depth of uh, experience that you have brought to it and you have made it very clear to us in the clinical context as to how we should practice with the number of cases that you have seen yourself and which have left an impression on you which you have shared with us So that is why i wanted you to take this lecture and i'm so glad that you agreed to it because i know you have a very busy schedule it must not have been easy to take time out and prepare such a comprehensive uh, lecture for us uh, many you. thanks thank you anjali I... everyone is busy in this whole in this busy world so don't worry i i am not that everyone is busy as i am don't worry about it. so another there is question. one more yeah and another question yeah any role of pregabalin analogs in cancer pain 
pre gabalin and analog piece analog piece gaba painting gaba painting yeah so yes there i told you i have given you you were there where were you when i showed the slide <laughs> there are clear cut evidence for neuropathic pain in dr it was one slide yeah one yeah, slide was, one. and this is was evidence based slide and guidelines from various part so definitely pregabalin and gabapentin works well for neuropathic pain uh, there is recently now there is a trend for using duloxetine initially duloxetine we were just extrapolating what about the evidence for diabetic neuropathy but now there are enough evidence for cancer neuropathic pain also again we have to be very careful in deciding the doses and taking care of side effects there are a lot of chemotherapy used now so a lot of patients are suffering from chem chemotherapy induced peripheral neuropathy so certainly a uh, lot of patient will come uh, with uh, chemotherapy induced pain so yes. these uh, anti hyper hyper algesic agents we are tingling numbness burning all these neuropathic symptoms are there you use these, <coughs> you use these anti uh, neuropathic pain drugs which is very important part of the cancer pain management seventh question Dhrunil says that recent article suggests use of bupropion in cancer pain. What is your take? Acha, okay. That I is done. That is done already. Yeah. yeah. So with this, uh, I think there are no questions. So thank you very much, Dr. Sushma Bhadnagar, for this exhaustive lecture. Very nice, lucid discussion also. And uh, I hope that all the uh, participants and listeners are happy. So thank you very much, Shohan. Thank you very much, uh, Anjali, also for this organizing. Thank. This. Thank you very thank much you. for it. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Sohan, Dr. Anjali, Dr. Yoshna, Dr. Jain, and Ankita. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining. At least 37 participants joined. So I'm so happy that at least 37 people have heard. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much for extending us the opportunity to host the session. I hope you had a seamless experience. And thank you so much for the valuable insights you have shared, ma'am. So, with all due permission, ma'am, can we conclude the session over here? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.